Hello, I'm Jamila Musaiva, an international social etiquette consultant and author of the book Etiquette, The Least You Need to Know. In today's video, I'm going to be telling you about what is the least that you need to know about dining etiquette. Before I get started, let's address two questions. Number one, what are table manners? Table manners is basically your behavior around the table. So how you hold cutleries, how you eat, even what kind of conversation you hold all make up part of table manners. Second question that people often ask me, why do we even need table manners, especially in today's world where a lot of restaurants are casual dining places and we often have informal dining experience. The truth is you need to have good table manners for your own good. You'll feel more comfortable at the table and you'll put others at the table at ease with your good manners. So whatever the occasion, whatever the degree of formality of the dinner is, make sure you put your best foot forward. Let's talk about seating arrangement. Where should you sit? If you're a guest and you're invited by a host or you say your date, then you would wait for him or her to gesture you to the seat and take your seat afterwards. If you're the host, then you would do the same. You would point the seat that's intended for your guest and he or she will take their seat. So the rule of thumb is that the guest always gets the best seat. That meaning he or she will be facing the main area, the entrance, so he or she will get the best view. If you have multiple guests, then one guest will be your guest of honor and you should save that best seat for him or her. Now that we have seated down, we need to remember a couple of rules. Number one, don't slouch. Don't sit like this. Roll your shoulders backwards, straighten your back and sit straight. Number two, don't press your back to the back of the chair. Imagine you have a little kitten behind your back, so you are not pressing the little kitten. Leave some space between the back of the chair and your own back. Number three, do not place your elbows at a table when eating. However, it is acceptable to place your elbows at the table whenever you're taking a break between the meal to have a conversation. Number four, according to American dining etiquette, you're supposed to leave your hands on your lap whenever they're not holding cutleries. In French dining etiquette, you're supposed to always rest your wrist at the table so your hands remain visible to your dining partners at all times. This comes from an old, outdated notion that you might be holding some weapon in your hand and you're hiding it on your lap underneath the table. The question that I get asked a lot is what should I do with my phone or my back? The general rule is that whatever does not belong to the dining experience by itself should be held away from the table. That applies to your phone and your back. You should silence your phone before sitting down and put it in your pocket or your bag. For your bag, if it's a large bag, you can place it on a special little chair designed for that bag or you can ask for a bag holder which looks like a hook and you can hang your bag from there. Else, you can also place your bag in an empty chair nearby or it's nowadays acceptable to place a bag behind your back, so, but do it in a very rare cases. If you have a small bag that's like a clutch, you can place it on your lap and cover it with a napkin. Whatever you do, do not place your bag on a ground lever. In some cultures and some traditions, it's deemed to bring bad luck, and actually, it shows that you don't respect the money that you're holding in your bag. So keep it always above the ground level. Let's now look at our dining table. Where should I start? This is my dinner table setting. I have a napkin, a plate, a soup spoon, salad fork and knife, main course fork and knife, dessert fork, dessert spoon. The dessert forks should be much smaller than this, but this is what I'm going to serve and I'll be using it. Next, I have the bread plate where I'm going to eat my bread and I have a butter knife. So the interesting part about this knife is that unlike traditional knives, this has a dull blade and it's used to scoop the butter and to spread it rather than cut it. Next I have my glasses. So in order not to confuse which one is whose, I'm going to make this letters B and D with my fingers. So where B is pointing, that's where my bread plate and butter knife is. And where D is pointing, that's where the glasses are. In order not to confuse it with that of your dining partners, use this trick. So now you are seated down, you unfold the napkin. If you're the host, you would do it first to indicate it to your guests. You can do it in two ways. One, with fold lines facing outward, uh, like this. 
or the other way around uh, when you have the folded lines facing inwards towards you. I actually prefer this way. Um, this is because I can basically tap my fingers and leave the stains inside. Uh, so from the outside, my napkin looks perfectly clean. Once you place the napkin on your lap, you would use it to gently wipe your fingers and also dab your lips with it if necessary. If you are going to a bathroom and you will be back, you would place the napkin on the chair to indicate that you will be coming back. If you are leaving the table for good and you're not coming back, then you place the napkin on the left side of the plate, gently fold it, no need to shape it back to its original shape, and leave the table. If you happen to drop your napkin, you can pick it up if you're okay with that, or uh, you can also indicate to the waiter that you want a new one. The glasses also often get confused. Which glass is for what? There's no need to worry about it because the waiter or the sommelier will usually fill your glass. So, but it's good to know what is for what. Let's look at this arrangement here. Generally, the taller glasses should be behind the shorter glasses or the glasses are often arranged in the order of their height from the tallest to the shortest. Looking at my arrangement, I can see that I have a glass for water, a glass for white wine, and a glass for champagne. So let's start with a water goblet. It usually doesn't have a stem, like you see in this case, and you would hold the water goblet by the bottom of the bowl, like this. This is quite recognizable glass. It's a champagne glass. It's long and thin. The shape ensures that the bubbles in the champagne stay intact while you're enjoying your drink. Also make sure that you hold this glass by the stem so your fingers are not actually touching the bowl and are not warming up the drink while you're drinking it. This is a white wine glass. Unlike the red wine glass, which is shorter and larger, this glass is longer and thinner. The red wine glass is shorter and larger because red wines have much bolder taste notes and they need more area to breathe. With the red wine glass, you would hold by the bottom of the bowl. So imagine this is a red wine glass, you would hold it like this. For the white wine glass, you have to hold it by the stem so you don't warm up your drink while you're drinking it. So let's get started with our meal. Before you start, watch your host to commence. If he or she starts to eat, then it's time to enjoy your meal. If you're in a large group of people, then you would wait for everyone to be served with their meal and then you'll start to eat. So the bread plate is used to enjoy the piece of bread and I use the butter knife to pick the butter and spread it on the bread piece and then I'm gonna enjoy one bite at a time. The first meal that I'm gonna be enjoying is a soup. I'm gonna use the soup spoon, dip it in the center of the bowl, take it to the opposite edge of the bowl, slide gently, and then bring the spoon to my mouth in order to make sure that I don't get any spills on my lap. For my second course, I'm gonna have a salad. I'm gonna use a salad fork and salad knife. I will show you two ways of eating. One is American, which I'm gonna currently show you. So you cut one bite of a mozzarella and tomato at a time. Uh, then you would place your knife and then you switch your fork to the other hand and eat it like that. The other way is the European or continental way of dining, where I would just use the fork and knife and uh, in the same way and use it to cut my tomato and mozzarella and then what's gonna happen I'm gonna leave the knife in my hand and eat it like that here I have my main course which is chicken breast with parmesan uh, I'm gonna use the main course fork and a main course knife to cut the chicken breast one piece at a time when you're done with the meal, you place your fork and knife in a position 12 to 6 o'clock with tines facing upward or downward, like the French dining etiquette does usually. Or you can also place it in a position of 10 to 4 o'clock, um, just like this, and with a fork facing tines facing down or facing up. It's up to you. Once you've finished your main course, it's now time to enjoy the dessert. This is the perfect time to excuse yourself from the table and use the bathroom if you wish so. 
So here I have a dessert fork and a dessert spoon. Uh, I will slide them to the both sides, respective sides. Uh, I'm going to be using a fork as a holder and a spoon to cut as a knife. So I'm going to hold the dessert with a fork and cut it with the spoon. Then I'm going to use the fork to push any uh, remaining particles that I want on my spoon and use the spoon to eat my dessert. Once you're done eating your dinner, it's time to indicate to the waiter that you're expecting a bill. You can do so by having eye contact with the waiter or by raising your hand at your elbow. Once you've paid the bill, it's time to leave. You should take your napkin, fold it, not too neatly, and place it on the left side of your plate, and leave. If you're the host, you do so indicating to your guest that it's time to leave. If you're a guest, you watch the host to do so, and you leave. On a final note, if this was a dinner you were invited to, make sure you send a thank you message to the host the next day. If you really truly love the dinner experience, you might also consider sending flowers with a beautiful handwritten thank you note. I guarantee you a beautiful handwritten thank you note will serve you a long, long way. Thank you so much for watching this video and I hope you really enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed filming this for you. I'll see you next time. Bye!